Tito's criticized some of your recent performances. What do you think about his recent performances? Uh, you know, I've watched all of Tito's fights. It's hard for me to remember. You know, he's he's a Hall of Famer. He won his world championship. I, I don't dispute his career at all, but but he wasn't me. If I would have been given my opportunity before 2005, way back when he did, he never would have been the champion. And neither would the guy with the mohawk and the tattoos on his skull. I would have beaten all of those guys. And those were great fighters, but they weren't me. What are you expecting in this fight against uh Tito Ortiz, what are you expecting from him? I don't have a lot of expectations, man. Eventually my music will hit those speakers and I'll make that walk. And when that ref says fight, I promise you I will. And what happens after that, we're all going to find out together. Is he making too big of a deal about uh, when you pinned him on his birthday back 20 years ago? Yeah, I was flattered by that. I was flattered he even remembered it. I've never brought that up in my whole career. He brought it up, so I thought that it was fair game. But, uh, yeah, that meant something to me. I, Tito Ortiz had already been in the UFC. And a lot of people weren't following it back then. You know, back in the 90s, this is before the network deals and, and Big Fox and the exposure and ESPN and all this, all this other stuff. I was following it. My father was following it. We cared about it. We liked it. And it, it was a big deal to get matched up with Tito. It was, it was very exciting. I was flattered that he brought it up. What do you feel about facing him now? Do you, do you feel, are you, you know, are you happy you're getting this chance? How do you feel? Yeah, uh, you know, I wanted to fight Tito way back in the 90s, back when he was champion. There's only two divisions back then. Uh, I was a little small for the weight class, but that was the weight class. If you wanted to, to do this work, uh, they had light heavyweight and then they had heavyweight. When I finally got my opportunity, more divisions had been added, including middleweight. And uh, I didn't think the match would ever happen. I thought it was going to be something I was just going to have to tell my buddies, man, I could have <laughs> always beaten that guy. And they just have to take my word for it. But I was either right when I told all my peers that or I was wrong. But we are going to find out on the 21st. Easy way or hard way, either way, we're going to get the answer. With, with that said, how important is this fight? Say again? With that said, how important is this victory and this fight for you Man, right they're now? all important to me. I, I, I like to win. I'm a competitor. I've, I've never had a fight that I, I didn't take seriously and that uh, I was willing to do anything within the rules or outside the rules to win. <laughs> Chell, you were one of the faces of the UFC for a very long time. You're wearing the belts where you know, black and red now. How does that feel? Uh, you know, I'm a fight fan, man. I, I watch when Mayweather fights. I don't know who the promoter is. I watch the big UFC fights. I watch the Bellator fights. I even watch WrestleMania. I usually go live. So, uh, I like the competition. I like the production value. Uh, it, it feeds my ego. I could drag Tito outside right now and beat him up, but I would much rather wait until January 21st when millions of people can tune in. He says this is uh, probably his last fight. He's going to retire after this fight. Is there any added meaning in that for you that this is you know, one of the one of the greatest uh, two of fighters of all time's last fight? Well, he acts like it's his choice. He acts like he's not the first guy that I've retired. Uh, it's kind of a foregone conclusion. There's There's been many other people in my career that after they get out of there, they say, I'm done. Tito's just going to be one more. Chell, the two of you have never been friends. Why do you think he takes you so personally, everything you do so personally? Does it really go back to that fight in Bakersfield? Uh, you know, it could have. I, I didn't know Tito remembered it. I, I really thought that that was, that was a cool thing, you know, for a guy that went on and, and got in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I don't really know what's in Tito's head, um, and I'm not too concerned with it. All, all I can do is take care of myself. I've worked hard. I listen to my coaches. I still got a weigh-in in front of me, so I got to go focus on that when I leave here. But uh, I mean, it's, it's business as usual, and they could put Tito in there, or they could replace him between now and then. I will be ready to fight. You've never been as nice as uh, in the lead-up to this fight. Are you trying not to talk smack and not to get under his skin? No, I just I just don't need Tito in this fight. You know, most guys need a dance partner, myself included. But there is no bigger fight than a grudge match, except for a comeback fight. This is a comeback fight. At the same time, it's a retirement fight. The story tells itself. I've got nothing to sell here. This is the first time I'm not I'm not in on the pay-per-view. This is an on-pay-per-view. It's live, free, and only on Spike TV. I have nothing to sell anybody if I wanted. I'm telling people, I'm giving them an opportunity. The greatest fighter of all time, Chael P. Sonnen versus Tito Ortiz. It's legend. That's just in fairness. He is. It's all going down. It's going down Saturday night, and it's free. Nine in the east, six in the west.